now that the MCSA is dead, one of the things that we're all doing is looking to Azure as our next steps. But the scary part about that is how we're going to handle Active Directory. That's what this video is all about. Let's go. A super frequent request. What is the difference between Active Directory, Azure Active Directory, and Azure Active Directory domain services? Before we dive into it, if this is your first time visiting my channel, I'd love to encourage you to click that subscribe button, the little bell, so that you get notified when new content comes available. It's free and it's fun stuff. So if you want to grow your IT career and your IT skills, give it a click. All right, Active Directory, Azure Active Directory, Azure Active Directory Domain Services. There's now three offerings on the table, and here's the thing, none of them are equal. So I wanted to make this video to answer some of these questions and really put some of the rumors or misconceptions to bed because this is complicated and it's incredibly important to get this part right because, well, this is what controls our domain. What a clever name. Let's draw it up. So the way I'm gonna handle this is I'm kinda gonna break it down into three sections. We're going to have Active Directory, Azure Active Directory, and Azure ADDS, or Active Directory Domain Services. Now, when we get to Azure Active Directory Domain Services, I'll probably clear the screen and we'll have to start over because that'll make more sense once we draw it out. All right, Active Directory. What does it do that we just rely on so heavily? When we install Active Directory Domain Services, we're really getting serious now about our enterprise. Active Directory Domain Services, when you install that on a server, that really gives you the option to promote it to a domain controller. And it does just what its name says it does. It controls your domain. This isn't just talking about Active Directory users and computers where you control all of your user accounts, groups, and computer accounts. No, taking that even a step further, Active Directory users and computers does more than you may give it credit for. That's where you set up OUs and categorize and set up a hierarchy of your structure. That's also where you can set up login scripts or home profiles. And that's also where you can even set the specific properties, the attributes of your users themselves. And then you can actually create programmability around that too. That's just the one app that comes with installing Active Directory Domain Services. Don't forget about group policy and don't forget about DNS or even Active Directory Admin Center. There are features in Active Directory Admin Center like fine-grained password policies that aren't available in other platforms or other apps. So if I'm jumping back here, we've got ADUC for users and computers. We've got DNS, we've got group policy, and by themselves, those are some pretty big things, but I'll also put AD Admin Center here too. Now it's not uncommon to see other services running on your domain controller like DHCP or Active Directory Certificate Services. It's not recommended that you run them on your domain controller and that is also outside the scope of this conversation. That's not comparing apples to apples after all. Now what is Azure Active Directory though? Azure Active Directory really is just a place to store users and groups. Notice not OUs. We can also register apps and devices to Azure AD. The big benefit of that is that once our users and groups, apps or devices are registered in Azure Active Directory, I can then sign into a device using my Azure account like a Windows 10 laptop. And then I have single sign on to my apps or Office 365 account. Notice I haven't said anything about Active Directory Admin Center, group policy, the DNS service, even though there are DNS services in Azure, they are just separate from Active Directory, or anything about OUs. That's because you won't find them in Azure AD. Azure AD really is just a place to store usernames and passwords. And that's why they have something like Azure AD Connect. That's an application that you install on premise that sends or syncs your usernames and passwords up to Azure. So your on-premise accounts can have the same username and password as they do in Azure. You can even configure something like password write back so that when someone tries to log into Azure or Office 365 and they change their password, that can send the changed password back to your Active Directory services. Now there is also something worth pointing out. There is a new offering called Microsoft 365, where if you fire up a laptop for the first time, 
and it goes through that setup process and it asks you to sign in with your Microsoft account. If you sign in with your Azure AD account, that will join this device to Azure AD. And then with Microsoft 365, which is a kind of premium offering, you can push some policies down to that device. Security settings, more or less. You cannot do anywhere near the fine-grained policies that you could on group policy like mapping drives, changing the registry, installing printers. Nope, that stuff's not gonna be available to you through Azure AD or Microsoft 365. Now, lastly is Azure AD Domain Services, which they tout as a domain controller in the cloud. But to explain this one, I'll need to clear the screen. You have your on-premise facility. And in that on-premise facility, you have mydomain.local. Then in Azure, you decide that you spin up a VM that's going to run your application. But that application requires Active Directory domain services. It requires GPO, or it requires Kerberos or LDAP authentication. And here's the real kicker. Your organization is not going to deploy a site-to-site -site VPN to Azure. Right there, they're not going to do it. They don't want to. So how then do you meet this requirement of having Active Directory domain services in Azure when you can't deploy a VM in Azure to serve as your domain controller? This would be the best scenario in this case is you deploy a site to site and then let the domain controller here in Azure replicate from a domain controller here on premise. Nope, we can't do that because there's no site to site, right? Enter Azure Active Directory domain services. With Azure Active Directory Domain Services, we can deploy a domain in Azure without deploying a domain controller or a VM. The key thing to indicate right now is that this will not be the same domain that you have on-premise. This is a completely separate domain that exists in Azure. But luckily, thanks again to Azure AD Connect, we can sync our users and groups that exist on-premise into Azure Active Directory, and then sync from Azure Active Directory into Azure AD Domain Services. So maybe our domain up here is mycloud.com, and ultimately in mycloud.com, you'll get the same users that you have in mydomain.local, thanks to the synchronization that takes place from Azure AD Connect all the way through mycloud.local. Then what you can do is you can spin up a server, we'll call this DCMGMT on your Azure VNet, install the ADDS tools. This would be like ADUC, DNS, and so on. And then you can connect in to this domain controller that is hosted by Azure. Now, all of a sudden, you don't have to worry about server patching, backups, or so on, because what Azure actually did is they deployed two domain controllers behind the scenes that replicate for each other and provide high availability. And your app can now authenticate against mycloud.com and you can deploy things like GPOs, OUs, and so on to mycloud.com. So there you have it. They're really not any of them alike. They offer very similar features, Azure AD domain services and our on-premise Active Directory, but they are not meant to replace each other unless you're trying to get to a fully cloud-first, only on the cloud type of infrastructure and platform. It is possible, some organizations are doing it. It's just kind of scary in the environment that we live in right now, but that's where Microsoft wants us to go because they canceled the MCSA. Ugh, it's still just, it still blows my mind that we're here talking about that. But that's it. There's Active Directory, there's Azure AD, and then there's Azure AD Domain Services. That's the three differences from them. And what I'd like to say is that we've got you covered in training on CBT Nuggets. If you'd like to learn more about on-premise or Azure AD, we've got a lot of content out there on this stuff. So cbtnuggets.com, get that free trial if you don't have it. Check the description for the learn.gg link. You can give that a click. It'll take you straight to my content where I've covered stuff like AD and Azure AD. All right, thanks for stopping by, y'all. See you in the next one.